I don't know why it is, but architects are not spending their time and money creating marketing products for their businesses. And maybe it's just the kind of people they are. I, I don't get it. What is your experience? Episode 132. This is the business of architecture. Welcome back, Architect Nation. This is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. If you believe that it's possible to make money and do good, then this is the show for you. If you aren't already on the Business of Architecture email list, make sure you claim your free account on businessofarchitecture.com by clicking the green Join Today button. I'm your host, Enix Sears. Today's show is sponsored by BQE Software, the makers of ArchiOffice. ArchiOffice is the office and project management software built with the needs of architects in mind. And for a limited time, startup firms can get two free seats of ArchiOffice for a year. Go check it out at ArchiOffice.com. Today you're going to learn about earning money or pursuing a passion that isn't directly related to what you do every day as an architect designing buildings and working on buildings. You'll also discover how to tap into the power of YouTube to market your practice or spread your ideas. Our guest today works with the firm of Job Moore designing high-end custom homes based out of Greenwich, Connecticut. He's worked on multiple products that have been featured, published nationally in professional journals and magazines. In addition to practicing architecture, he's the creator of a popular, explosively popular YouTube channel, how to Architect, which also has a website of the same name. With over 12 million video views across the web, he explores what it's like to be an architect and teaches skills like drawing and hand lettering. He's the author of a book published by the MIT Press, How to Architect, and he's the creator of multiple products, including the Architect's Bird Feeder, which you can find online. Today's guest is architect Doug Pat. Doug Pat, welcome back to Business of Architecture. Great to be here, Enoch. Thank you very much for taking your time to interview me. Oh, well, it's good to have you on. You know, last last episode, which was all but five minutes ago, you you kind of you gave us some inspiration about, you know, we got to peek into your life about the passion that's driven you about the side products you've always had going on some, you know, a little bit about the product development you've involved in. And then your last comment intrigued me. It said, yeah, let's just monetize that. Awesome. <laughs> so let's let's talk about monetizing that. OK, yeah, um, let's start out, though, first with your YouTube channel. Because you have you own the YouTube channel How to Architect, which I would say is probably the most ar successful architecturally based uh, YouTube channel out there. Has millions of views. How did How to Architect start out? Oh, it's a good, it's a great question. Um, so I was working on the Architects Bird Feeder website, and originally it was a very, very back when I was working on the website. Let's say that was two thousand six or seven. When I started on that project, uh, you couldn't buy a whole lot of templates to create websites with. And so I decided it was just going to be fully custom. And I got a, I got a guy through a friend who helped me on the web stuff, and he was very familiar with creating websites, a guy named Aladine Vargas. And Aladine is just an incredibly creative, helpful guy. And he was always there for me when I call him in the middle of the night, hey, I you know, need some help with this or that. Anyway, we we're working on uh, the Architects Bird Feeder website. And he said, Doug, you know, I really love your architect's handwriting. And it's an unusual skill. And you know, people love this stuff. You should make a video called How to Write Like an Architect and videotape yourself uh, drawing all these letters out and post it on YouTube. And I was like, no way. I mean, there's no way I'm going to do, I don't know how to make videos. I'm not interested in YouTube. It's a total waste of time. I just want to get this product to market and, you know, get her done, make a ton of money. And uh, he's like, no, this is, a, I'm telling you, you will get a lot of people to watch video. And I said, to him, well, why would I do that anyway? I mean, what's the big deal? I don't even think YouTube's going to survive. <laughs> so, it's, it's doomed. It's doomed. Right. It's Who doomed. Who wants to watch movies on, on the yes. computer? <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody's going to use a computer. So anyway, it tells you how much foresight I have. So he says, well, anyway, you should do that. And he, he bugged me about that for weeks and weeks and weeks. And finally, I sat down and I, I did this video, How to Write Like an Architect. And I've got to tell you. What really helps in making these videos is the time-lapse feature 
on iMovie because it can speed everything up. And I have to use that time lapse because I have, ironically, very shaky hands. So my hands have always been shaky. I have benign essential tremor, it's called, and it gets older, it gets worse with age. And I've always had a tough time, especially when I'm under pressure uh, using my hands. And so I can't, if I'm going to draft, I cannot have any caffeine. And it's just a real challenge, always has been, and it's just getting worse. And so it's amazing. It's so ironic that that is the one video that people love and they always want me to draw on camera and, uh, you know, see me drawing. And so anyway, that feature really helped me out because it totally masks the fact that my hands shake. And so I made this video, I posted it, and I'm not kidding you, within three days, it, I went away on vacation, and I'm looking at these subscribers on this channel. Now, it was not called How to Architect. It was called like DougPat.com or something. My friend set it up for me, and uh, there were just people subscribing. I mean, I'm getting subscribers constantly. I'm thinking, what is going on? So I get back and somebody calls me and says, you are on Core 77 blog. That's a big deal. This is a designer blog. Design blog, yep. And how are you? This is amazing, but you've got to read the comments. They're awful. People are ripping you to shreds. So anyway, I went on this blog and I could not believe. Now, honestly, I get I, I get comments today and people say, like, you should be dead or I hate you. You shouldn't be on YouTube. I mean, you get the craziest nut job troll people. So this was – and today, I didn't even think about it. I just laugh. But back then, yeah. I saw these comments and I was devastated. I could not believe that people could be so mean. And they were, and all they were like, you know, this guy's probably not even an architect. That lettering stinks. He probably can't pay his bills. You know, I mean, there were things like that. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, how could people be so mean? And then I did a video series uh, called "So You Want to Be an Architect." And I might have done a couple of those videos, or "How to Design Like an," or "How to Design Like an Architect" was one of the videos. And Anyway, there may be four or five videos on the YouTube channel, and I would get every, and they were all relatively positive. There were only five percent that were mean, but you'd get the thumbs down clicks, and I would I would come home and I get these things by email, and I would tell my wife, I cannot believe I am putting myself out there like this, and people are so mean. I'm a sensitive guy, and my wife's like, Doug, you have got to knock it off. You do this and you leave it alone. You do not worry about what – it has no bearing on who you are, your talents and abilities, and you have got to shut it out or just you know stop doing it. Mm. So anyway, my wife and I went out one night. I had too much to drink. I came home and I deleted the channel. I was so upset. I came in. I read a couple comments. I was like, F this. I'm done. <laughs> Never again. You know, it was. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that was it. And that was – I was like, whew, I'm done with that. Oh. Anyway, a couple months went by. I'm sitting in my office. I'm looking at the computer. It was a really slow time for me. And I said to Sue, you know, I really liked making those videos. I miss that a lot. And she said, well, you should do it again. You should start a YouTube channel. And uh, I think if you – We'll just let it go, not worry about what people think and what they say. They're always going to be haters, you know, as they call them. And that's the way life is. And the computer just makes it worse. The internet, you know, just magnifies that. I said, okay, you know, I think I can do it. So I'm think, trying to think of a, a name. And I turned to her. She was doing laundry. She walked through my office and I said, uh, I said, okay, I'm going to do it. What should I call? What should I call the YouTube channel? She said, I don't know. I'm, how to architect. I was like, hey, that's a great name. I'll do that. Let's see if it's, you know, if I can. And it was open and that was it. So I mm. reposted the videos mm. that I had posted before and I started and I and I and the constantly just trying to figure out what it really was that I was doing and what was the content going to be and was it always going to be about architecture and so I've kind of drifted a little bit here and there and I've done some product development videos inside the architecture thing and done lots of architecture videos and and then I ultimately ended up doing videos for other people and other 
other businesses, people would say, hey, I have a shipping company and I'd like a video. You know, do you think you could put a video together that's about our shipping business and you know, we'll post it on our website? And so I'd make that video and then somebody else would say, hey, we could, could you make a video about our fence making business? And so I would do side projects like that. And I think I, I've made over 200, let's say 225, 250 videos. There are about 170 architecture, how to architect videos posted on the YouTube channel. And I make one every couple months now. It's just busy with work and busy with writing and busy with, you know, everything else. And mm. so I haven't, I'd love to focus on it full time. But again, the challenge with YouTube is how are you ultimately going to monetize what you're doing? Mm. And so about four or five years ago, I started the Architects Academy and have you know worked in that realm a little bit and tried a bunch of different things within that you know you've got you to me and you have these teaching channels and creating products and selling them on those websites and very challenging to monetize any of this stuff it just mm. at least it has been for for me mm. so Doug, well, people look at the, something like a YouTube channel that has millions of views and they think, you know, you're, you're practically retired. I mean, you're, you're making bank off this. What, how profitable is having a YouTube channel with lots of views just based upon the AdSense or just based upon the little ads that pop up in the videos? First of all, do you monetize your videos? And secondly, what kind of revenue does, does How To Architect bring in just the YouTube portion of it? Yeah, a couple hundred dollars a month. Couple hundred bucks. If you have a good month, it's you know a couple hundred. If it's not, it's you know one hundred and fifty dollars or whatever it is. That's uh, you know that's the way it works. Now I, I have a relatively small following, and I've got I think I've got about eighty three thousand subscribers now, uh, and I have close to ten million video views on that on the YouTube channel. At one point, a business called Five Minutes took my videos. We posted them on five minutes and that was ultimately, I think, bought by AOL or something else. And that went, that did really well for me for a very short period of time. They make, they take your videos and they just push them out there. Uh, and this, I think, is more of a European market. I, I never got a handle on it, but I did really well on that channel or through that business. I mean, I was getting, I think I had... 10 or 15, let's say 10 million views just through five minutes at one time. And then when they stop pushing your stuff, it just disappears. Mm. So that was very good for How To Architect for some time. And I never really got a handle on what was going on and how they were doing what they were doing. Um, so, you know, I think at the end of the day, I could say, let's say my videos have 15 to 20 million video views web wide, but only about closing on in on 10 uh, just on the channel. So, that is to say, if I post a new video, so I made a new video about the Sears uh, houses, those little residential mm. product, the 300 yep. some yep. designs, uh, that let's say has 3,500 video views right now or 3,300 video. That's been up for a couple weeks. So I'll get about 1,000 to 1,500 overnight within a day or two. I've got this core group of subscribers that always watch. So it's not 83,000 people watching one video. It's really a, for a guy like me who's been there since 2008. You know, I, so I've been there a long time. And so I've got, you know, a couple people that, you know, will email and they stay connected. They love the videos. They love the content. But it's not a massive, super true following. It's, you know, I think my numbers have just added up over time and it looks it looks bigger than it really is. Uh, but it's nice and it's it's kind of fun. It's nice to have all of those people that were at least interested or are interested in the content and they're not all leaving. <laughs> But uh, I, I really enjoy making those, making the, doing the content. It's really fun when clients, I should say, you know, one of the challenging things about being an architect, being a high-end residential architect is that I can't take the work I do and post it. I can't t because I've got clients who don't want their names or even their work, the, the work they're paying for being shown mm -hmm. to anybody. Mm -hmm. They're private people, they're wealthy people. And so I don't get the luxury of doing a sketch and then showing the world. I can't do that. So that's always, that's set me apart. I know there are some guys in my space that get to do that. I don't get to do that. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. You know, I, 
On the other hand, I get to work with great clients on great projects. And every once in a while, I did this job in Rye. It was in the Wall Street Journal uh, not too long ago. And uh, it was a great project because the owners were young. When we first met with them, I talked to Job. I said, hey, Job, I'd like to ask them if they're okay with me creating YouTube videos around their project. And they were like, yeah, that would be so cool and definitely do it. So that was fun. I got to actually post that project on YouTube and they thought that was so neat. They'd go on vacation. They'd show all their friends, look at the progress, look at the project. and But not everybody is like that. So that was a really a, a neat thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. Are you working for Joe Moore uh, full time right now? Yeah, it's yes and no. I mean, I typically have, as I said, one or two projects during the year. So it's not a full-time job. It's it's a project manager position. Sometimes it's full-time. You know, when the jobs really get rolling, like when we start construction, for example, I'm on a new residential project. So I was really busy at the end of SD and beginning of DD. Now I can hand over lots of work to people in the office and they'll do a lot of the interior elevation work and some of the you know paperwork stuff and they can help out with a lot of the things that I don't really enjoy uh, and I don't necessarily need to be involved in other than looking at it and then passing it along to Job. Uh, but I will get, again, very, very busy uh, once we are kind of tuning, phasing out of DD. And once we get into CD, I'm going to be, you know, gangbusters for a year. Uh, so it's not full-time. Sometimes it's really part-time, sometimes part-time, sometimes it's full-time. So. And did you work for yourself or have you ever considered running your own independent practice? Yes, I do work for myself. Not really by design at all. Uh, I live in a, a smaller town and in this neck of the woods, Mostly GCs have draftsmen that get hired to do bigger houses. And so it's really unusual, not, uh, not to say it doesn't happen, but it's more unusual. It's more usual for people not to hire an architect. It's pretty unusual for, for that to happen. But every once in a while, you know, through friends and family, somebody will say, hey, we've got a great architect. He's a Greenwich guy. He does high-end residential. It's going to cost more but he's going to do a really great job for you and I'll get hired. So I just finished a small project, not too far away. They did a little addition renovation, blew it out of the water. It looks amazing, really beautiful, but a small job. And, but it's fun, you know, it's when you meet people who are going to hire an architect locally, they really do enjoy the process. They want to get involved. They want it to be great. They're willing to spend money. You know, that's, that's why high-end residential can be so much fun. It's not, you don't you're not getting as many of the nickel and dimers and really challenging clients who you know not to say saving money isn't important but who really get restrictive and mean and you know challenging and that can be really tough but it's it's fun to it's fun when you get clients who are open to good work so i do work locally but it's rare yeah yeah have you ever had the itch to have your own practice you no know, <laughs> No, I mean, there's so much about this business that I don't want to deal with. And I've gotten to a point, you know, I, I'm 45, 40, I'm 46 years old. And there are just things I don't like doing. And at this point, I'm not going to do. And if it means not making as much money, that's totally fine. I'm just not going to do it because I'm going to live a little longer because I'm not doing those things. And so there are definitely things that I just have gotten to the point where I couldn't have my own office because I'd have to deal with some of the things I just don't want to do. I'd have to have other people doing them. And I don't, you know. Sounds like you have a strong sense of what, what you like and what you want. I'm getting there. <laughs> it's taken a long time. I've got a very patient wife. <laughs> oh, love it. Love it. Well, let, let's talk for a second about video marketing. So do you think there's any potential there for video marketing for architecture firms, architects? Yeah, I absolutely do. These videos I've made for Job have been great. So I've done a few videos for his some well-known houses that he's done. And they're, they're accessible through our website. They're great. They're fun for clients to look at all the photographs if they're not going to go through the website and look at all the pictures. And you get a voiceover, and so you get a description of what the architect was actually after. So, I mean, I do not get it. I have talked to many architects, 
and they've said, Doug, we're going to hire you to do our next video on this great project we just did on the Long Island Sound or in Nantucket Island or wherever the heck it is. And I, the phone does not ring and they do not make videos. So I don't get it. It seems really, it seems like a really underutilized place for architects. And heck, they don't have to hire me. I mean, I tell them, if I sat down with somebody for 20 minutes, I could explain how to make this, you know, a, a great video. But I don't know. I just don't think, I don't know why it is, but architects are not spending their time and money creating marketing products for their businesses. And maybe it's just the kind of people they are. I, I don't get it. What is your experience? No one does it. I think partially it's the the uh, the unknown of uh, it's new, it's different. Yep, and it's expensive. At least the perception. Yes. The perception is you know I know that uh, I get I talk to videographers all the time and they'll charge you know ten thousand for a video, but this is a professionally shot video you know that yeah. they they want to do the whole thing, um, and it's new. Yeah. You know, so we need some innovators out there. And well, there are some people innovating. Yeah, I'm not a videographer, but I'll make it for a few thousand dollars. I mean, that's well, I'm not I'm not asking for ten grand. Yeah, and, uh, I do a very good job, and I write the whole script. I do everything. I mean, what I what I'll do is I'll go on uh, a business's website and just read through their entire website, read about all their content. I will write a script. I know exactly how long it is. I'll record it on Audacity. I'll use iMovie. I'll have them send me all their professional photographs. And it is, you know, a couple days work and it's a done deal. So it's really simple to do. Well, let's let's send you some work. Right on, let's send man. send you some videos, man. <laughs> Listeners out there, you're, you're looking at a gold mine here. Doug Pat will do you a video, which is yeah. awesome, on your firm. Uh, for a couple thousand bucks, that seems like a no-brainer for me from a no marketing perspective. No-brainer. <laughs> Thanks, Enoch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It? It's a, it's a, I think you're exactly right. It's perception. It's money. It's, is it going to work? But, man, it's fun to have those videos, and then you can just send your clients links to these things, and they get to watch them. And you keep a video, two, two and a half minutes, that's it. Piece yep. of cake. Yep. So you had you, you said you look I could sit down and tell them in in twenty minutes you know you have a five minute version for architects who want to get started yeah you try it out you mean describe how to make a YouTube video yeah yeah how how would they start what's your recommendations Absolutely. I mean you're you're basically creating a summary of either you're describing so if you're going to do a marketing video about your the work on your website you're either going to do a marketing video that features a building right a building. Or it features their office and the work there. So you're going to do one or the other, I, I would think. Or you can, you know, you can make a video that's more just about the office. So uh, there are the, the three examples of how you're going to make a video, and then you're essentially creating a write-up about that. And as far as I can tell, when I create scripts, uh, in between 135 and 140 words is one minute. It doesn't matter what the words are. Just do word count on, or just do uh, you know word count on word, and it's as easy as that. So you want to distill that script down to about two, two and a half, maybe three minutes, and you're done. Then go online and download Audacity. Audacity super simple to use. It'll take you ten minutes to figure out, and maybe a half an hour to figure out. You create an MP3 file, which is super easy to do. You're just saving your work. Then you take that MP3 file, you put it into iTunes. So you save it to iTunes, which is drag and drop. It's as simple as that. You open up iMovie, and you create a movie. And you need a beginning and an end. So the beginning could be this is my you know X Y Z office, and our office does this kind of work. Here are the examples of that work. This is X Y Z Z office, and see you later. And that's it. So the last part is the content, and you can either go out onto the site, put your camera on a tripod, and film you know moving that camera. Just do a pan left to right or up or down in five or six locations, or 
have a prof- and I say professional photographer because you really do want good pictures. You can do them yourself, but take them outside when you got good light. And then interiors, you need good light. But anyway, get good pictures and then use those photographs. Every photograph should be on for four seconds or longer. Four to six seconds is ideal. And you're, that's it. And then you just looking at pictures while you're do while your voiceover is running along and you know, you, you match the two and you're done and you can, you can do that in a couple days, if not shorter than that. And that's it. Boom. And people like watching those videos. It's really yep. simple. Boom. So you can do that or you can just send your information and Doug will do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yep. So Doug, how do, how do people reach out to you if they want to just connect with you or, you know, maybe some of them will want some videos. I think some people might. Well, they can contact me at D P A T T D Pat at Mac.com M A C or at me.com M E.com. So it's D Pat at Mac.com. Uh, my Instagram account is awesome. Uh, it's super fun. And I look at that all the time and that's Doug Pat. Super easy to find. I'd say I use Instagram most, and then I think you can contact me through my uh, my Architects Academy website, which is through Fedora, which is a teaching channel, and that's uh, that's the ArchitectsAcademy.com. But honestly, if you Google my name, you know all of those things will come up. So super super simple to find me, and I am on uh, the web. I'm on my email all day long, so I'll get right back to you and. You know, we'll go from there. What's the the Architect Academy website? Uh, it is howtoarchitect.com. If you type that in, the Architects Academy comes okay, up. Now that okay. is, I guess I should say, I get a lot of subscribers on this channel. So I've created a little free online teaching channel called, if you go to howtoarchitect.com, it is just a basically a free school and you can do all these super cool lessons and watch tons of videos and it is all free. And it's about making, it's about making models and it's about hand drawing and it's about hand lettering, but there's a coupon in there for $25 off the Architects Academy. So if you go to the architectsacademy.com, uh, that will come up. And that academy is, uh, we meet four times a month on Saturdays at nine o'clock. And that's just really, really fun. People take people that take it, love it. And we stay friends and they're always emailing questions and comments. And I'm, I've been encouraged to create some sort of little Facebook thing for, for all of us, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So when Doug, when I go to the architectsacademy.com, I go to Christian Kiransu's website. So Let's what see. am I doing wrong here? Let me see. Is it the Architects Academy with an S? Is it plural? I'm just typing it in here. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's so funny. So it'll be – it's now – see, I link it through How to Architect, so it's really tough to get to. It's the architectsacademy.usefedora. That's U-S-E-F-E-D-O-R-A.com. Okay. It's an awful way to get there, but I don't own the architectsacademy.com. That dude does. Yeah, <laughs> dude. <laughs> From many moons ago. Yeah. Who is Christian Kira Sow? Now everyone's going to go. They're like, who is this guy that owns this? I have no idea. He's going to get tons of views today, though. That's yeah, awesome. He is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the architectsacademy.usefedora, U-S-E-F-E-D-O-R-A.com. Boom. And that's really fun. So uh, I have a gr- – I'd love to teach – and that's really kind of another passion of mine when I when I do it. So gotcha. It says enroll in course for 175 bucks. How much? How much is this bringing you in a month, Doug? Oh my gosh, I, negligible. I've had. Yeah. I would say rather that over the course of four or five years, I've had over a hundred students. Okay. So do the math. That's the way yep. it works. So yep. a few thousand bucks, maybe a year, if I'm busy on it. I had been doing. There's some years that I do it absolutely every weekend, and uh, there are some years that you know I do it half the year or a third of the year. So this year is probably going to be about a third of the year. I've just been too busy to get super involved with it. So, and that's you know that's part of my challenge is I do so many so many things that I don't focus enough on one thing, and I think that's probably uh, maybe that's a problem many entrepreneurs have. But yeah, yeah. Is it a problem, or is that the way you like it? Maybe, 
You know, I had a I had a, a teacher once. I studied classical design and classical painting, and this guy was brilliant. His name is Myron Barnstone. He's still around, but he's not doing that. Wait, and, what a great architect's name! Is yeah, Myron architect? Barnstone. Guy's amazing. It was a, a classically trained painter, one of the last people painter, in the okay. world to be teaching classical design and the use of the golden section and the derivative rectangles of the golden section, which are all the root rectangles. And uh, he used to say, you know, people complain about their plight. They complain about where they are in life. But if you really sat down and talked to them, every one of them can do something about it. They don't do something about it because they're getting something out of it. So – Wow. Right. That's exactly – so to your point, you know, I'm, I'm that way, but I'm that way, and I guess I like it that way. I mean there is something to that. That's why I don't commit to some things because I'm getting something out of it deep in the back of the, my noggin, you know. That You just dropped a psychological bombshell on us right here at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. That's great. That's great. Yep. Doug Pat is the creator of How To Architect. He's based out of Allentown, Pennsylvania. Residential architect Doug, thanks for joining us on Business of Architecture. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Enoch. I really appreciate you interviewing me, and uh, I'd love to do it any time. Good to have you on. Thanks, man. All right. Have you thought about starting your own practice, or are you looking to take your practice to the next level? If so, I wanted to let you know that free registration for the 2016 Architecture Business Plan Competition opens on December 1st, 2015. Start your planning process now and enter for a chance to win a grand prize of $10,000. Five finalists will be flown to Philadelphia to present their full plans to four industry-leading jurors. Travel and lodging are provided. So this is a -a one-of-a-kind competition. It's open to all licensed architects in the United States and Canada who are planning to start a new firm within one year or currently own a firm that is less than 10 years old. Visit archbusinessplan.com to learn more. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you, as an architect, can run a rewarding business that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the Join button to claim your free account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, start a new firm, and much more. You'll also get access to my book, Social Media for Architects, where you'll learn how to use internet tools for fun and for profit. Until next week, this has been The Business of Architecture. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, do it anyway.